Hello and welcome to another episode of Bite Size Science. And as you've noticed, this is not an animated video like the usual. This is live action and these are my hands. In this episode, as you probably guessed from the video title, we compare combat knives and kitchen knives. And this is a counter to those who say things like, but they're both knives, a knife is a knife. Well, if they're both knives, then why even bother making something like this or this or this? Why don't soldiers or commandos just charge into battle with a wound off strapped to their sides? Are you crazy? Why don't you try it, boss? Saying these are both knives is like saying these are both automobiles or these are both aircraft. They are different things made for different applications. This is a tool. This is a weapon. A kitchen knife cannot do the work of a combat knife. I mean, it still can kill and maim, but it won't be too good at it. And likewise, you cannot use this in a kitchen. It won't last very long. It's not what it's made for and the shortcomings will manifest themselves very soon. So what's the big deal here? What really separates a kitchen knife from a combat knife? Two things, form and material. Let's look at these two factors one by one, shall we? Uh, form, it's quite obvious. I mean, just looking at these two, you can tell which is which. This has the typical kitchen knifey look and this one's clearly the combat knife. It just looks more tactical, I guess. Now for any kind of practical product, it's function that defines its form. From something as simple as a blade to something as complicated as an aircraft, there is a reason why a Concorde looks different from, say, a Boeing 777X. Now just think about how you would typically use these two knives. Let's see now the kitchen knife. Specifically, this is a what's known as a chef's knife. You would use this to slice meat. You would chop vegetables. You would maybe crush garlic cloves sometimes with this broad blade or try opening a lid or cut open a tin can. But for the most part, you'd limit your movements to slice or chop. But you wouldn't do this, would you? You, you wouldn't stab with a kitchen knife, at least not under normal usage conditions. As for a combat knife, you wouldn't use it for chopping and slicing meat or vegetables. I mean, you can, but it would be a really bad idea. I'll tell you why in just a while. A combat knife you typically use to slash or stab. Slash, stab, slice, chop. Slash, stab, slice, chop. You realize the difference is the motions of the combat knife involve speed. Slash, stab, you don't move a kitchen knife so fast. Okay, I know there are exceptions, but generally, generally, combat knives are used with a lot more aggression. There is an impact factor involved, which kitchen knives are not subject to. Engineers have to factor this in when deciding the shape of the blade. The combat knives have to be able to withstand a lot of abuse, a lot of punishment. So they are shaped in a way that allows them to survive these beatings. And more importantly, for the user's hands to survive the rigors of combat. Like you'll notice, the grips of combat knives are much better designed, a lot more ergonomic. Maybe not so much in this particular very basic knife, but combat knives in general, they all have some sort of hand protection, a guard of some sort to prevent your hand from slipping onto the blade and cutting yourself during a stabbing motion. Knife Pro Max XXLs also known as swords, all have some sort of hand protection ranging from a simple katana suba to elaborate basket hilts on Portuguese rapiers. A quick Google search will show you pretty much all combat knives have this feature. Even this little card knife, let me just unfold this real quick, you see? Even this tiny little knife has some sort of hand protection. Very rudimentary, but it's there. Whereas kitchen knives usually do not have this feature. Now, this particular model does offer some sort of hand protection, but this is not the default option. I had to specifically search for this kind of knife that had this sort of thick base. Again, a Google search will show you that most kitchen knives do not have that thick base, not even the high-end ones. It's just not that important because kitchen knives are not meant to stab. In fact, let me show you the other kitchen knife I use. I use this one for lightweight cutting, for something that is not a pineapple. 
but i highly doubt i can achieve a successful stab with this i don't think this will do much i'm not gonna be winning any duels with this you see the combat knife also has this little stub on top here so extra protection by the way important safety tip when stabbing you actually don't go around stabbing people because it's generally considered rude you should see the dirty looks i get but if stab you must or if you're into fencing sword fighting as a sport don't do this this th this can really screw up your wrist reduce this angle hold the weapon like this this is a more stable position more in line with how your hand is designed to move less chance of injury it's safer at least in the context of a stabbing safer but we are just talking about the handles so far what about the blades themselves say you take this knife remove this handle and put in a badass looking tactical handle in black would that make this a combat knife no it's not that simple no not even if you cut serrations and give it a combat knife shape because the material is wrong that brings us to the second factor blade material and just like the form the material is also decided by the function the purpose kitchen knives are mostly made out of stainless steel for good rust and corrosion resistance and combat knives out of carbon steel for sharpness and edge retention this kind of used to be the rule but these days with advances in metallurgy the lines are getting sort of blurred and remember that when we say stainless steel and carbon steel it's not just two materials it's a whole family of materials several subtypes which is why I think most carbon steel versus stainless steel videos on YouTube don't make sense. I mean, you can't pitch a very high grade carbon steel against a cheap stainless steel and declare that the carbon is better. Plus material isn't the only thing. There are other factors like heat treatment, hardness versus toughness, grain structure, finishing processes. But generally speaking, stainless steel doesn't hold an edge very well and is notoriously difficult to sharpen. But kitchen knives, you use them to cut foods having a wide variety of ph values and all those chemicals try to eat away at the metal and stainless steel holds up really well against all that chemical abuse a combat knife sharpness and edge retention are more important here so it would be better to use carbon by the way this doesn't mean you don't get carbon steel kitchen knives and stainless steel combat knives some chefs swear by carbon steel knives it is said the edge retention and cutting experience is vastly superior though it does take a lot more care and maintenance against corrosion and of course there are some special combat knives that are made of stainless steel although it's certainly of a grade way superior to what's in your kitchen knife costs a lot more in fact the navy seal standard issue is a stainless steel combat knife and who's more badass than the navy seals if it's good enough for them it's good enough for you stainless because navy seals often work in wet conditions and need something that won't rust actually this knife is in fact stainless steel you see that 5 cr15 chromium that's the main alloying element of stainless steel so this is a low carbon steel with not the best edge retention but hey you can't expect much for 12 bucks so when it comes to carbon versus stainless it's a bit of a gray area it's not like one is better than the other they both have their advantages and disadvantages it all depends on application so there you have it the two things that differentiate a tactical knife from a kitchen knife Oh, and one more thing. Number three, combat knives usually come with a cover of some sort to keep that edge sharp because when you need a combat knife, you really need it. But there is another category of knives, survival knives. And over here, the preferred steel is, once again, depends on the purpose and environment. If camping out in a dry area with less humidity where rusting is not an issue, then carbon steel it is. But if you plan to use the knife in a snowy, humid or coastal area, then you'd be better off with stainless. Quick bonus fact, a lot of combat knives come in black to avoid glint. By the way, you know where else stainless steel is used? Oh yeah, that's stainless steel right there. And there is this as well, but only 90s kids remember this. Maybe I'll do a video on just stainless steel sometime, it'll be interesting. If you want to see it, please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Please like and share this video and if you really like me, please show some love on Patreon. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.